Hello, everyone. I've never seen anything like this before. So uh, if I look like I'm staring off into space, uh, please pardon me. I'm just looking at the top, the top bar of my computer, the little green light up there, and that's kind of a weird thing. Well, my name is Alex Mayolo, and uh, I work with a group called Future of Music Coalition. We're based out of Washington, D.C., and uh, we formed around 2000. The idea being um, Jenny Toomey and Christy Thompson, the people who started this organization, uh, noticed that there was a, a lack of representation for artists where uh, law, policy, music, and uh, technology all came together. So, as, as we all found out shortly after that, you know, technology and, uh, and things related to it were a big, big, became a big, big part of the musician's life. Uh, file sharing, how to handle that, whether it's a good or a bad thing, uh, how artists get paid in the new, uh, the new musical landscape, all those things were things that uh, we wanted to address. So, uh, of the many things that we, uh, we work on, um, some of them being net neutrality, I'm sure that's an issue you're all familiar with, um, and uh, you know the clear channelization of America, things along those lines, uh, we also um, decided that, help, uh, that, that artists were seriously underrepresented when, um, in regards to access to affordable health care, more than, than most people. 16% uh, of all Americans don't have health insurance or adequate health insurance right now. Uh, we did a study in 2003 and found that um, over three times that in, in regards to musicians were, were uninsured. So, uh, we found that, that the main reason that people are uninsured is because most of the time they're lower income, uh, the working poor, uh, things along those lines. And as most of you probably know, a lot of musicians are the working poor. So it only makes sense that, um, that they would also be un or underinsured. So I was asked to come in to the project because I'm a licensed health insurance agent and broker. Uh, I primarily work in property and casualty insurance. I insure stuff. And the reason I insure stuff um, is because uh, I think that it's something that's needed in society. In my very, very progressive town, we have hippie lawyers and indie rock real estate people and, uh, you know, uh, Wiccan realist, uh, uh, I don't know, <laughs> and things like that. Um, so, but in, I noticed that everybody who was in the insurance industry pretty much lived to play golf and um, it didn't really represent our community of artists. So, even though I carry a health insurance license, I, I've always been critical of the health insurance industry, whereas property and casualty is the type of thing that I think makes the community better. Meaning, some schmuck like me couldn't take out a bank loan if I didn't have an insurance company to back me up, to back up a loan. It just wouldn't, no bank would lend me uh, money on good faith and fingers crossed that if that house burned down, I'd be able to write a check for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, but that's a choice I've made by a house. Uh, I don't feel like being born should be a requirement for you having to buy insurance. Uh, so, so I've, for a long time, I've, I've, uh, I've felt that we need national health care in this country. And we need to think of it not along the lines of, um, of how the free market works, or that is the type of thing that competitive forces should dictate that we need to think more along the lines of what great societies do for their citizens. Uh, along the lines of, uh, like, if you were to ask somebody, how much did it cost to bring electricity to the people in the rural you know, provinces of America? The answer would be, who cares? You know, what does it cost to educate people? Well, it, you know, it doesn't matter. How much did 
World War II cost us? Well, you know, as much as it cost because it was something that the government had to do. And I feel like we need to start looking at healthcare the exact same way and stop framing it as something that, like it's a typical insurance product because it's not. So beyond that, uh, you know, we, we have to remember that we are stuck with this system. The, uh, we have met the enemy and it is us. We've decided that we, uh, I don't know why, but we as a nation have decided this is how we want to do it, even though every other developed country in the world isn't, wouldn't dream of, of having our system. <laughs> um, so, right now we're at a point where um, we need to figure out how to work with what we've got. The, uh, as you know, the health insurance legislation uh, just went through and a lot of things are getting ready to change. It is not a national health plan. It's not really that much of an overhaul when you think about it. I think the way it's best described is we were, we, we, we told the government that a lot of us didn't have health insurance and their response was, well, you know, you ought to buy health insurance. <laughs> that, that'll, that'll get you insured right there. <laughs> uh, so, uh, not the, the kind of a let them eat cake uh, response, if you ask me. But um, there are there's a lot of good that's come out of it, and some of the good that's come out of it is that pre-existing condition clause, exclusion clause, is going away. I think it's important to look at the fact that the pre-existing condition exclusion clause is no longer necessary if everybody's insured because it exists. Uh, solely for the purpose of keeping people from hopping on and off the health insurance rosters. I'm sick, I better go buy health insurance, get treated until I'm well, then they jump off. That doesn't work economically. So if everybody is required to carry health insurance, then the pre-existing condition exclusion clause, it, it's a moot point. So as nice as it is, I mean, it's not really needed anymore. Nevertheless, there there are going to be uh, new things rolling out to take care of people who, are, who have been difficult to insure up to this point. There are going to be uh, uh, things, programs available for people who, uh, who are having a hard time affording health insurance. And uh, what all that is remains to be seen. So a little about my program. Uh, Future Music Coalition in, in 2006 put together a program called HINT, the Health Insurance Navigation Tool. You can get there by going to www.futureofmusic.org and there's a HINT banner on the front page, you can just click on it. We don't sell anything, we don't endorse any insurance companies, but we do tell you what, what you need to know, I think, to go out and buy your own health insurance within your budget. Uh, that service is going to become more and more necessary as all of us who don't have health insurance in the United States are, are required to get it. It used to be something that if you wanted to risk it, you could go without. Uh, by 2014, that will no longer be an option for people. And so the HIP program, I think, while it's helped quite a few musicians over the years, uh, is, is getting to the point where we were, I think we're going to be essential for the musicians community because they no longer can kind of turn the other way, sweep this thing under the rug, forget about it. I mean, as American citizens, they're going to have to start uh, getting this one sussed out. So the way the hint call works is you go to futuremusic.org, click on the hint banner, set up an appointment and we will call you on our dime and it doesn't cost anything. Appointments are usually a half hour, but if we don't have a appointment scheduled afterwards, I mean, oftentimes we go long and you know, it's not a hard, fast half hour unless somebody else is scheduled. We answer your questions, we ask you a bunch of questions, probing questions to kind of figure out what your situation is. And then, or, if you'll pardon the pun, kind of give a diagnosis. And um, when we find out what your budget is and what you need, and maybe some complications that you've had up to this point, 
we can usually give you two or three things that you need to do to go out and get yourself insured. It's not as complicated as the insurance companies would like to make you think it is. It's actually quite simple. There are three or four things that you need to know, and the rest of it's all marketing that you can forget. And so, uh, oftentimes, when people call in, they have access to health insurance options through a spouse or an employer that they didn't even know they had. And so, you know, I would say a good third of our calls we result in us directing somebody towards a free or cheap option that's been kind of in their life for a long time that they didn't even know they had. Um, anyway, that's, that's how Kent works. That's what Future Music Coalition does. And, and that's, uh, that's what I do. So if you or anybody else you know is in need of advice, and it's unbiased and it's free, uh, have them get in touch with us and we'll, uh, we'll get them straight as best we can.
attention to the hospital if an anvil falls on your head or you fall down a flight of stairs, you know? So you're, you're, you're in good shape there, and most people, I would say, who are the age of the working musician, I'm going to be 42 next week, so I, I guess I don't know what the top end of the working musician is. Um, let's, what's that? We've got guys working on walking in their 60s. Well, I, I'd like to be one of them one day. <laughs> uh, so I have no plans on quitting, and I know that, but let's just say that, you know, anybody who's still doing it at 65, I mean, the government takes the number. We have national health, you just don't get it until you're 65 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so stick around. It's going to get good, right? Uh, so the, uh, anyway, the, uh, the, the thing is, if you get the short-term health plan, I, I would say that the average cost on something like that would be between maybe $40 and $60 a month. So that's good news, right? It's not terribly expensive. It fills the gap in regards to portability. Hooray. It protects you if you get hurt. Fantastic. And uh, you, you can put it together immediately in case your ship comes in and it's time to go on tour tomorrow. Um, the downside of it is you buy it in chunks. And the reason it's cheap is because it's more like an auto insurance plan in the fact that if you have a, a bad year, they don't necessarily have to renew it. So we were gonna, the last thing that were dropped, yeah. we heard was um, that you know, I, yeah, 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 that pissed off the system, I guess. So, yeah, if you manage to, you know, drive like a maniac and keep your, you know, if, if, you know all year long, you're not going to be able to keep your auto insurance. And likewise, if you, if you put a pretty heavy burden on your short-term health insurance plan, that there, you know, you're, you're not going to get renewed. And I, I know that sounds cruel, but it's also, you know, it's part of the deal. That's why it's cheap. It's really there for kind of emergency only stuff. The good news is there are ways to get out of that that are going to prevent you from being, you know, kind of left high and dry, I guess would be the best way to put it. So that's what I recommend for most musicians. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember the seven states that don't allow it, but I, ironically, um, they're the most progressive states. Okay, it isn't adequate healthcare in the eyes of, of um, you know, those pinko states like Massachusetts and Vermont, uh, because they they feel that anything that would allow somebody to become uninsured at the end of one year, if the worst happened, you know, if it all hit the fan, um, is not adequate, and it doesn't serve the consumer. I disagree with that, even though I. Uh, you know, I'm pretty much in sync with how those states work otherwise. Um, but the hyper-regulation of the insurance industry in those states is, is so hyper-regulated that it's not an environment where a short-term health plan can exist. I think there, it's New York, New Jersey, Vermont, Massachusetts, um, and I can't remember the rest of them. Wisconsin, I think you guys have it. So that's the type of thing that would be available to you. And uh, that might be one thing that I, that, that's the thing that I would recommend if your employer isn't cool enough to figure out a way to keep you on their books while you hit the road. Now, one other concern, of course, is what happens if you get hurt on the road? Well, that's going to be sort of up to the details of, of your health insurance plan. Almost everyone that I'm aware of will give you some sort of coverage while you're out of, out of network. Sometimes it's limited, sometimes it's a little bit more expensive, but I'll tell you the same thing I tell everybody else, and that is, if you roll the van and you end up in traction in a hospital in Denver, and you're not able to get shipped home until your bone is set, you know, a month later, and that whole endeavor is a, you know, $500,000 loss, and you have to pay 7000 of it because you're out of network instead of 5000 I don't think you're going to care. <laughs> you know, you're just going to be happy that you have something in place. And so, uh, I would recommend highly that musicians get their wellness stuff taken care of before they leave their
general market. And another note on short-term plans, they are not actually designed to, to uh, give you wellness treatments. That's not why they're there. They really are emergency only plans. But on that note, I'll say that with all health insurance plans, the wellness component is sort of an oversold part of it. That's not to say that I'm not pro-wellness. I, 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 <laughs> I think everybody needs to go get a checkup. As I mentioned, I'm in my 40s. I gotta start going and get a physical every couple of years. So I do go and do that. And whether I'm paying for it out of pocket or my health insurance is paying for it, I'm going because I want to make sure that any nasty bug that's floating around in my system gets picked up early. So, uh, just like your auto insurance policy doesn't rotate your tires and change your oil, I feel like all of the, the drug card stuff and the visits for only $20 and all that stuff is the marketing ploy, honestly. You don't get that stuff for free. We all know that a visit to the doctor doesn't cost $20, it costs a couple hundred. And so, if you're only paying 20 for it, that other $180 is being made up somewhere, probably in your monthly premiums or by the people who aren't going. There's no free lunch when it comes to insurance. So, if you're on a real stripped down plan or one of the short term plans and you don't get wellness and drugs out of it, I would say that the money that you're saving by being on a more stripped down plan is. Uh, is money you could just throw in a bucket, you know, and, and get and, and use when you need to go in and get a checkup somewhere. Now I don't know how Milwaukee is with stuff like this, but some real music-friendly communities like Austin and Memphis, uh, New Orleans, Athens—not our town, but a lot of the big music towns in the country have musicians' clinics where they have health days where they'll do checkups. Obviously, women have the Planned Parenthood option. Things like that can be used if you don't have a wellness component built into your plan. And I encourage you to use that. I mean, you give something to society as a musician, even though you know your parents probably didn't think so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, if society is giving you, uh, society doesn't give you a hell of a lot <laughs> when you're a musician. So take what you can get. And if you have clinics in your area that are willing to see you for free, give you checkups, uh, and give you health advice, I can't encourage you enough to, uh, to take advantage of that. And if you're in a position where you need to buy your own health insurance, and you get the choice of buying uh, a stripped down plan with a high deductible, or paying a lot more money per month for something that's sort of the white glove plan, Generally, I would, I would send a musician in the direction of getting a more stripped down plan with a higher deductible, and this is why. We, I, I, I don't know how many people are sitting in the room, it doesn't look like a lot, but you uh, might. Oh, good. Okay, that's encouraging. Hey, what's up? All right. How's it going, back row? All right. Uh, so, the, um, the. Let's just put it this way. I, I would imagine that everybody who's a working musician at some point has played a benefit concert. I can see about five of you now. Who all has played a benefit concert for somebody? Yeah, yeah you're just you're this is. Okay. You're the last, that is yeah, last year. yeah, pretty much everybody. I know I have. I did it three last year. You know, and oftentimes what we're doing is we're getting together and we're raising money. Uh, and even if you do well, I'll give you an example. A friend of mine got a brain tumor a few years ago, and the entire community came out for this guy. Super Chunk played, Paulo played, um, my band played, a few other. They ended, we ended up raising 15 grand for this guy. But his, his, his medical bills were probably close to $700,000. And the question I had when it was all done was did it matter? Or did the creditors just take that $15,000 and say, Awesome. Now you only owe us six hundred eighty-five thousand dollars, man. Um, and so, I'm encouraging musicians to put some sort of catastrophic health insurance in place, and maybe even sort of form a pact among each other, uh, with, with each other, 
that if you put that catastrophic plan in place, I mean, you can consider it a stop loss, if you will, that if they would do something like that, that the benefit concert uh, idea will work better. If my friend with the $700,000 bill for his brain tumor had had some sort of health insurance in place, all of his treatments probably would have capped out at five, six, seven thousand dollars, and that you know, fifteen, sixteen grand we raised would have covered two years of out-of-pocket expenses on his health insurance. You see what I mean? You turn the heavy lifting over to the health insurance company, and you write a high deductible plan, which is cheaper for you on a monthly basis, and really just depend on the kindness of others. That if, if one of us, you know, the great musicians community, if one of us were to go down, that the rest of us would pull in together and handle the smaller end of the loss, the five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, which is very attainable. Um, and it, it's the type of thing that I want people to start thinking about because I think it's a good idea. I mean, we have something going for us that I don't think accountants have, you know? <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if they're going to get together and have like a number crunch off to raise money for us. Or is it, if, if one of their people goes down? I mean, who doesn't want to go to a good rock show with like six or seven awesome bands playing and everybody, and the good vibes that come out of it also. I mean, the you know, way to let somebody know you love them. But if that money isn't going to actually eliminating some sort of, a, you know, erasable debt, then I don't, I don't know exactly if we're helping that much. Catastrophic health insurance, I think, well, that's a subjective term. You know, that's that's like anything else. In, in, you know, like how much is enough food? <laughs> uh, so, so what is catastrophic? I mean, I think if most people have, you know, most people will, if they they were left having to come up with three or four thousand dollars, you know, assuming that the benefit concert machine in your area wasn't going to jump jump into it for you, that that might. That might be kind of tough. Somebody for somebody else it might be ten thousand bucks. So catastrophic health insurance is if you find the you know if you'll pardon pardon my language the oh shit level you know of, of your debt and you and you kind of put it right around there like if I have a terrible 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 year like and, and, and everything goes wrong and I'm stuck with my deductible and out of pocket maxes. Uh, you know, how am I barely going to squeak by? What, at what number am I going to barely be able to squeak by? That, I think, is catastrophic health insurance. I have a friend who's a dot-com millionaire. Catastrophic health insurance for him is probably like, you know, $50,000. For me, it would probably be more like a couple grand, you know? And for other people, maybe three, four thousand uh, dollars So, the short-term health insurance policy would be, let's just say, a type of catastrophic health insurance because it wouldn't get you the twenty or thirty dollar doctor's visits. It wouldn't get you the ten or twenty dollar drugs. You would need to meet your deductible before you got any help with prescriptions, and the deductible would probably be fairly high. I would encourage you to consider a high deductible based on the logic I just laid out. Um, so that, I guess, in answering your question, that made short-term health insurance possibly a type of catastrophic health insurance, but a permanent plan, or even something that's given to you by your employer with a five, six thousand dollar deductible on it, I mean, that's kind of catastrophic health insurance, too. Does it help you avoid, avoid catastrophe and not much else? Yes, that's catastrophic. Now you define it. Please. Do you have the information on the website and how to get a uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's www.futureofmusic.org. And that, that's for Future Music Coalition. And I encourage you to do things other than look at the health insurance stuff that we have on the website because there's plenty of stuff there about 
um, you know, how you know revenue streams work these days, how people are making a living playing music or not playing a living, uh, making a living playing music, um, things that are facing us uh, that we all need to be concerned about. As I mentioned, uh, we you know we I really encourage all of you to keep an eye on the net neutrality issue. There are what should I say forces at work? Is that really conspiracy theories now? <laughs> There, there are forces at work. They're trying to privatize aspects of the internet, and I'm sure most of you are aware that the internet is pretty much your best friend as a musician right now. It allows you to. I mean, we're in a day and age right now where you can uh, record music for next to free. You can put it on the net and get it out to people. And the sole requirement these days for you having a career is working hard and your music not sucking, you know? <laughs> and um, whereas in the past, I mean, I, it, it, a bunch of other people made the decisions for it. So I, I know it's off topic because we're talking about health insurance, but net neutrality is very near and dear to my heart because every band I've been in for the last five years has marketed itself. I also, I write for a magazine called Tape Off which is a recording magazine um, that some of you may read. Uh, and oh, really? Oh, that's good. Yeah, there's, I, I love the Midwestern recording tradition. I'm friends with a lot of people in Chicago who are all tied in with the recording scene there. And uh, Midwestern engineers are my favorite. They're so no BS and, you know, hard work. They close the circle for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. On the subject of yeah, the Midwestern recording right. ethic. Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, I just saw Bob Weston last week. In fact. Um, so so uh, yeah. What I was saying is like you know, tape off is not only on paper but it's online, and that you know that's teaching people how to record and. You know, my band's music's online, I get friends' music, you know, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, all that stuff is available to us to market ourselves, to book our own tours, and all of these things. It's as if, you know, I mean, the internet, the GPS, and the cell phone pretty much have put all of the, the power back in our hands. So I really, really would like for all of you to get up to speed on the net neutrality issue. So check out everything else at the Future Music website. And if any of you are in D.C. in September, yeah, in September, come to our policy summit. If affordability is an option, we have scholarships. We usually have about five, six hundred people who show up. A lot of senators come, people from the FCC, and a lot of the big brains as far as music and technology. Uh, are concerned to uh, show up to this thing. So. All right, and I have the information about that conference, so if somebody's interested, come see me. I have the information to hand out. Please uh, say hello if you come, if any of you make it out there. And I, I mean, I know it's a long way from Milwaukee, but yeah, you probably need to see the Smithsonian in anyway, right? So uh, anyway, if you end up coming, track me down. And, and let me know, you know, if I can help you face to face, I'll go get a beer with you, or we can just sit on the stoop to Georgetown or whatever and chat. Alright. Alex, thank you so much yeah. for taking Saturday morning with us. Oh yeah, it's a pleasure. And happy birthday. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> Alright. All right. Yeah. We'll see you. I think I'm gonna hang up now. Right on. Okay, okay. thanks.